strap on your seat belts and get ready for a great ride. Lee's presentations are memorable and will leave you feeling excited and ready to take on the world. Welcome, Lee. So good morning. I hate hearing my bio read, just so you know. That's the most uncomfortable thing ever. And those of y'all that have ever had somebody introduce you know that's pretty dreadful. But the main reason that I do want to let y'all know that I am still a producing realtor is that's why I became an instructor and a speaker. I got real tired of hearing instructors who had sold a house one time back in 1978 and they want to tell you how you're supposed to do it right now without understanding how the markets have moved and changed and how consumers have moved and changed. Now, to be honest with you, I don't work buyers anymore. That's the happiest thing I've ever done, except for firing Dave Ramsey leads. That was a real happy day. But outside of that, getting rid of buyers was good because they aggravate my nerves. Now, some of y'all might love them. I do not because they cannot make a decision fast enough and they hem and haw and gnash their teeth and yell at you about houses you were supposed to tell them about that they found on Zillow that aren't even real listings. So yeah, you know, you have that buyer. See, I sent them over here to Jackson, Michigan, where by the way, this is an interesting town. Did not know y'all had a museum for prisons. Did y'all know that you have a whitetail museum right up the street? I did not know there was even one of those in existence, but I should have brought my daddy. You have some man down here with a chainsaw dog on his front porch. You know, they've carved him out of chains with a chainsaw. And what's the, bird, the bee driving a cart? What is that? Is that a honey person? Do you know? It's right next to a lot for sale. Y'all need to know your inventory. Get out there and learn. I saw that bee and I got very distracted. The state trooper behind me slowed down too. So anyway, we're going to talk a little about the deadly sins of real estate. And the thing I want y'all to know, first of all, is I know my realtors. Y'all want all the free stuff. Here's where it's located. So take a picture of this slide. And then you won't have to make 14 pictures later on that you'll never look at in your camera roll, but will eat up space on your phone. You just need this one. When you go to KiwiLive.com, it's going to ask you for a keyword. That keyword is hustle. And I say it like that, like y'all are my children, because frankly, as realtors, y'all know how lazy we get, don't you? And you can say amen when you agree with me, because you know I'm right. And we don't mean to get lazy, y'all, but you probably, like me, have a folder full of conference and class ideas on your desk at the office that you were going to get around to but then your phone rang, or the inspector called, or the appraisal went south, or the house caught fire, or whatever excuse you had for not ever implementing anything. But the only way your business will change, the only thing that will impact your real estate life to make this three hours today worth it is hustle. You have to roll your sleeves up and do something. You cannot be looking for some silver bullet, some coach that's going to charge you $1,200 a month and promise you 100 new listings and think that's going to change your business. Y'all are good at wasting money, but you're not good at hustle. So all I'm going to ask you to do is when you download it, and by the way, the average in, in a class is that eight people will download my resources. And I teach an average of 400 people at a time. So y'all should be really overachieving since you're a small earthen 400 class, so let's do that, okay? Let's do something with it. And as we talk today, I need y'all to also understand that I'm talking to myself. Because since I've been in 17 years, and those of y'all that have been in a while like I have, you know, you have good habits for a while, and then you fall off the wagon. And then you say, oh Lord, I got to get back to basics, back to basics, and then you get back to basics, and you do well, and you get busy, and then you fall off the wagon. And those of y'all that are newer in the business, do we have any new realtors in the room, the under one year crowd? Oh, y'all are still sweet and not jaded. Oh, you still like people, don't you? Your day will come, because all my grizzled veterans in the room say, mm-hmm, your day's coming. So I'm talking to myself while I talk to you, but I can guarantee you I will step on your toes at some point today. All I can tell you, though, is that when you feel like I'm in your space and stepping on your toes, that probably means that's an opportunity for you to get better. Kind of like when you're in church and the preacher feels like he's preaching right to you and it's very uncomfortable. It's because we need to be made uncomfortable. I am not here to sugarcoat anything. I am not Willy Wonka. So with that being said, let's talk about one of the biggest sins in our business and that's ego over substance. 
This is you if your business card says you are a million dollar agent or a multi-million dollar agent or number one in your market or neighborhood or office or branch or brand or mama's heart, whatever it is. Y'all, people hate us for that. They hate you when you brag about yourself to consumers. And plus, let's think about in our business, how do we rank ourselves? By what? What, what one item do we use to d differentiate top from bottom? It's not volume. It's commission dollars. You look at every brand and how they rank and how they give out awards, and it's based on commission dollars. Now, why do we think consumers hate us so much? Because all we talk about is money. And then you put on your business card that you're a multi-million dollar producer. So the consumer asks you to take a break on what you charge because they figure that means you made multi-million dollars. Y'all, that meant something when my daddy got in the business in 1978 when houses didn't cost very much. But what does it mean now? Nothing. Take it off your cards. Stop it. When you go to a listing appointment, what does a consumer want you to talk about? Yeah. Them. We are in the middle of the most selfish society that's ever lived. And they said, my generation, the Gen X, y'all said we were the me generation? Mm-mm. Mm -mm. We got nothing on these snowflakes that want a trophy for everything. They are the center of the world. So they don't care about you. They care about what you can do for them. And when you want to showcase what you can do for them, you need to lean into substance and not your ego. So for you to do that, we've got to talk a little bit about why you do real estate. So think back to when you got your license, your pre-licensing days. And for some of y'all, this is going to be a longer stretch to go back in time than others. I can tell that you're okay being poked at. When you went to get your license, how many of y'all did it because you like people and you like houses and thought this looked fun? How many of you thought you wanted the unlimited income? Or how about the flexible hours? You wanted to be your own boss, right? Does that cover most of the reasons we go to license in school? Then you do your first transaction and you say, what in the hell have I gotten into? Because you didn't understand what you were getting into, did you? You find out you don't like people. Not all houses are cute. The unlimited income comes with unlimited expenses and that flexible time frame means you get to work 24 seven. Woo! So we wind up forgetting why we do real estate and we wind up exhausted and burned out. And our business, y'all, we don't talk enough about the impact of burnout and what we do to ourselves in our efforts to please consumers and to be available. When you get to that point, where you don't want your phone to ring again. You know that feeling? You're like, I know I have to answer it, but I don't want to. That's burnout that causes that. Or when you want to poke a sharp stick in the eye of your local competitor because they're on Facebook talking about, oh, houses are flying off the shelves. Oh, I sold another house in 14 minutes, woo! Burnout causes that too because you're unable to look at that in a positive manner. So why do we do real estate if it's, it can't be for the money? Would y'all agree for that? This is not about the money. The money is a benefit that we receive after we find out how we can do real estate in a different way. And my dad taught me when I got in the business, and I was 25 when I started as full-time residential realtor. He said, if you don't think about the money, the money will find you. Were any of y'all lucky enough to have a mentor that drilled that into your head at the beginning as well? It's the most powerful thing you can remember because then you remember it's not about what it matters to you, it's about what matters to the consumer. So if it's not about the money, we know the hours destroy you in this business. How many of you do real estate because you care about people? Liars, you're lying. You care about some people, right? You don't care about all of them. Some of them, you're like, I'm never talking to you ever again. You're fired. I'm getting my sign lock box right now because it's hard to care about people in this business when you carry their burdens on your shoulders because do they carry you on their shoulders? No. And we don't understand, and when we're emotionally involved in these transactions, y'all, how much it impacts us and how much that affects our ability to serve other people. 
Because when one client is dragging you into the mud, the nice people over here needed you to call them and you didn't get around to it because you're aggravated with the world. And the sweet people are like, well, I like my realtor, but he doesn't ever call me. Because you were talking to the jack leg over here that's screaming at you 11 times a day. So you can't do real estate because you care about people. You can't do it for the money. So what makes us get up every morning and go back after it? Are we sadomasochist? <laughs> I like how only a third of the room laughed. Are the rest of y'all wholesome or are you afraid to laugh? Because it's going to get worse than that. You should lighten up now. Do you enjoy confrontation? Who in here loves confrontation? You love a challenge when it comes across your desk because you can take care of it. She can. Are you the bulldog? She loves confrontation. She loves confrontation. Are y'all a husband wife couple? I mean, a real estate couple. She says, maybe we are and maybe we aren't after today. I said, Things change. But isn't it a reason to do real estate if you enjoy confrontation? Could this be a great job for you? If you're dealing with sellers who need to have the truth told to them, who need to have somebody walk them through the process of pricing when they're out of control, because the people-pleasing realtors have a hard time with the tough conversations, don't you? Because you want everybody to love you all the time. So people who love confrontation can make it in this business. How about educators? How many of y'all were educators in a past life, some sort? They make great realtors, and there's usually several in every room. Do you love keeping your client from ever being surprised? Walking them through the process? Educators really understand how to manage multiple personalities. You know how to handle the really slow client and the really advanced client. You know how to wipe noses all at the same time, break ahead over here, and still keep them in the classroom. So there is a gift that educators have. And generally, it's got to do with that hand-holding, nurturing management piece. How about healthcare? Were any of y'all in healthcare prior to real estate? One, two. Healthcare providers are also really good at real estate because you're good at triage. You're good at asking questions. You're good at diagnosing what matters to the consumer before you make recommendations. Whereas most realtors would rather talk, 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 talk until the solution magically appears instead of asking questions first. So think about the substance that you bring to the table. And when I want you to think about that, read this book. I know that y'all get told to read business books all the time, but this one is actually worth it. And we know RDR, realtors don't read. But the guy who wrote this book, Simon Sinek, or Simone Sinek, whatever part of the world you're from, he did a TED Talk in 2010 or 11. So if you're allergic to reading, watch it for 15 minutes. It's powerful. Because what he talks you through is figuring out why you do what you do every day instead of what you do. And often as realtors, we rely on what we do. We help get houses sold. We help buyers find houses. We negotiate. Well, those are just things that you do. They don't tell anybody why you do it. So a consumer says, well, why should I list my house with you? And if you don't really know what it is, you rely on the worst marketing slogan ever invented for realtors that half of y'all, I guarantee, are using and about to get mad at me. You ready? You are making promises you can't keep with every person who asks you why they should hire you because you say, well, I'm going to get you the most money in the shortest amount of time with the fewest hassles. See, y'all aren't even laughing because you're mad at me now, but think about it. Who can <laughs> promise the most money in a sale? Can anybody promise the most money? No, because you do not make the markets, do you? How about the time frame? Can you promise the time frame? No, and even now, there are realtors that like to argue with me and say, well, Lee, my market's hot. And I say, mm-hmm. I was in the business in 2007 when things were good. And then on July 31st, 2007, American Home Mortgage stopped funding at the table that day. My preferred lender, by the way, was American Home Mortgage. I had seven closings that didn't happen that day. We had packages that didn't fund. Now, all of a sudden, all those sellers saw what change? Their time frame, and could I control that? Did anybody in here control the dark years of the recession? No. So why do you promise that? And what about hassles? Why in the world do we try to promise no hassles? Because where do the hassles happen? On the other side, right? It's always the other agent, the other buyer, the other seller. I know. So we're making promises we can't keep, which maybe is why consumers don't trust us. 
And I think too, the reason you make those unreasonable promises is because you don't really know what to say. You don't know why you do real estate. And I talked to a lot of realtors after I had this discussion and they say, Lee, I can't figure out why I'm doing this. They're a little addicted to it because this business is like crack because you can't turn it off, right? You've been told to, but you can't. And you, you're making money, but I mean, I won't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why I do real estate. Well, let me tell you why I do real estate. And maybe this will help you on your journey, but read this book and watch that. Consumer asks me, said, Lee Brown, why should I list my house with you? I say, well, that's easy because I get my jollies out of helping consumers navigate the minefield of a transaction. And you might get blown up and I might get blown up, but pieces of us are getting across the finish line together. <laughs> Now, some of y'all are thinking, hey, no way I'm saying that. That's fine. You might not have the overabundance of personality that I was blessed with by the Lord. You can change it to something else similar. But what did you hear in that why? Together. Getting across the finish line together. Y'all went to the positive part. Aren't y'all the sweet ones in the room? You know what consumers get to first? What they heard? What do you mean I might get blown up? And I say, oh Lord, but let's talk about it. The home inspection, you could have fungal growth, you could have wood destroying insects because we're not allowed to say termites. And you could have lead-based paint asbestos, you could have uh, lust in the backyard. Do y'all know what lust is? Leaking underground storage tank. And see, the old people laugh real good. The young people get irritated when I make jokes about sex and lust. It's kind of funny. Old people have better humor. And so they hear me say these things, and then I say, you know what? We get past the inspections, and then we have the appraisal. The appraiser doesn't like your house as much as we did. Oh, but then we make it through that process, and then the buyer's husband was cheating on her with the neighbor's wife because they found it on the security camera. This happened in a cul-de-sac in one of my neighborhoods. And so it threw closing off because all of a sudden nobody was signing anything. I said, but you know what? We go through all these things, we figure it out, we patch it up, we move on. That's what it means to get through real estate. Now, if my consumers are going in there blowing smoke up their skirt saying, oh, I'm going to get you the most money in the shortest amount of time with the fewest hassles. And I come in there and say, I'm going to help you navigate the minefield. You might get blown up. Which one do they hire? I don't lose, y'all, you should know that. So I win these <laughs> listings because consumers crave transparency. They crave being told the truth. And as realtors, we're often so busy being rainbows and sunshine and unicorn and glitter, we forget to tell the truth. You tell the truth later when you have to because something went sideways, because most realtors talk about the implications of an appraisal that misses when. When the appraisal misses. You just don't talk about it till then, you're like, Nothing to see here. So what if you change your why? Because I do enjoy that. That's what I love about real estate. I love that it's different every day. I love that every transaction is different every day. And the way that I convey that to a consumer is by letting them know it is like a minefield. Because any of y'all who've served, we have any past service gentlemen in here or women? One. Look, give them a hand. Thank you. I always appreciate those who have served our country. And if you were ever near a minefield or learned about a minefield, what do you know about them? She's like, I wasn't going near it. I was smarter than that. I went Air Force, right? <laughs> but you think about it, though. You can't anticipate every move, right? So why do we pretend to? Lean into your vulnerability. You will find that consumers love you more for helping them understand that it's okay when they feel bipolar. And I had a seller call me and she said, I feel like I've gone bipolar. And she's an entrepreneur. She's run three different companies. And the woman is brilliant. And she was selling a house after living in it 13 years. And you know this is what happens with your successful people. They don't fool with houses because they know it's just a mess. And she said, I feel bipolar. And I said, baby girl, that's fine. That's normal. She said, what do you mean it's normal? I said, mm-mm. I said, you know how you felt when they came and looked at your house. How did you feel? I was so excited. And how'd you feel when the feedback was negative? I hated them. I said, that's normal. That's what it's like to sell a house. And as realtors, y'all, we have to message this better, but you can't message it until you know why you do real estate. And for those of you that are educators and healthcare professionals, I gave y'all a leg up. Y'all have it easier. The rest of y'all that come from maybe different normal jobs, lean into your past experience and then lean into what it is about real estate that makes you love it.
what got you addicted to this? What made you stay in longer than two years? Because y'all, the attrition rate is still crazy right now. 85% of new licensees give up within the first two years because they found out they don't like people, they don't like houses, it's costing them a ton of money, and they had no free time left, so they gave up. So if you've survived past that point, lean into why you did. Thank you.